Good morning. Welcome to the AppSIPA interview session. Today, we are very honored to have Professor Zhou from Tsinghua University to attend this interview as our guest. And Professor Zhou is the director of Center of Speech and Language Technologies. And also, he served as a vice dean of the Research Institute of Information Technologies in Tsinghua University. Welcome, Professor Zhou. How are you feeling now? Good, good. Not bad. Okay, okay. So, uh, my first question is: uh, Could you please share with us what you are currently doing and what topics you are doing um, in in the speech and language processing field? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's my great honor to be here in this interview session. Uh, actually, I have been working on speech and language processing uh, since 1988. So quite a long time. Uh, the research topic for me includes three parts. One is speech recognition, the second is speaker recognition, and the third one is natural language understanding. Uh, for the speech recognition and language understanding, uh, my focus is on Chinese language. So this is specific language. Uh, so for these three, I think uh, it is very popular, and uh, more and more people this area of speech. For example, speech recognition is theory. It's getting more and more popular. And also now we are going to have a Chinese version theory. Yeah, so I've this makes more people know about this technology. But I think there are a lot of challenges in those three uh, different kind of view, uh, fields. For example, for speech recognition, maybe for English it's a, a little bit easier, but for Chinese we have a very big challenge. Uh, what is it? For example, the dialect issue. Dialect issue. Yeah. Dialect uh, is a very important uh, affecting factor. Uh, in China, we have over eight major dialects all over China. And it is about 40 sub-dialects. But you cannot uh, set up uh, different uh, cost models for each dialect. Why? Uh, because people are trying to speak in a kind of Putonghua or standard Chinese. So in that case, so they are gradually you know, change from a dialect to uh, acoustic into a standard Chinese acoustic. They are gradually changed. So you cannot, okay, I build a, a specific model for this dialect. It does not work. So you try, you should, you should uh, do some research in how to uh, provide a solution to this problem. So okay. this is, uh, I think this is a very uh, challenging problem for speech recognition. Uh, for speaker recognition, it's a little bit different from speech recognition because, you know, it does not, does not matter what you are talking and uh, what language you are talking. So you just uh, uh, you just uh, consider who is uh, speaking. So this is uh, another issue. So in this case, I think we also have some challenges. For example, short utterance. If you want to identify or verify a person uh, in the speech segment, I think, what, what, what would you like? If you are asked to speak, for example, 10 minutes, do you like? I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, maybe one minute, uh, one minute you do like. So uh, maybe what you would like is... Seconds. Yeah, seconds. In second level, for example, one word or two words. For you know, in Asian China, there is a story called uh, Zhima Kem. Uh, <laughs> so only four characters, only four uh, Chinese syllables. So it's very short. But what we use is a kind of a statistical method in speech, speech recognition. But statistical method needs a large amount of data or sufficient data. Four syllables is enough? No, not enough. So you have, have to try a solution to this problem. So I think this is a challenge. Challenging. Yes. Another challenge is that about the emotion or speaking style. If you are training a model using neutral emotion, but when you test, you may uh, speak faster, or speak slower, or louder, or maybe lower, then the performance will degrade quite a lot. Yeah. And 
maybe you are happy or you get sad, you get angry, it also degrades the performance will degrade quite a lot. You should find a solution. So this is also another challenge. And the third one maybe is a cross channel. For example, we are using a speaker recognition technology for telephone banking. You can use a fixed line and you can use a mobile phone. But the mobile phone has different kind of types, different kind of models. So you change, you, you train in this channel and you test for another channel, how to match. Statistical method re requires the match between the channels, between training and testing. So this is also a channel. So I think uh, uh, all we have still have some other channels. This is a very good topic for research and also for development. And for natural language understanding, because now the internet is becoming, becoming more and more popular, uh, and uh, you, you can see every day a lot of new words are generated. Yeah. So how, that, yeah, how to deal with this new, newly generated words. And also maybe lexicon, a lexicon is changing, grammar is changing. Yeah. Uh, how people speak or uh, uh, express their ideas is also changing how to deal with this. This is not only in the uh, grammatical uh, phenomena uh, level, but also maybe acoustic. For example, if you are speaking and you perform uh, speech understanding instead of language understanding, you should deal with all these kind of things. So, uh, for short, just as a very short summary, I think for speech and language processing, uh, it is actually the technology not so major at this time. Uh, there we have a lot of problem to solve, and this gives us a, a good opportunity uh, to do a good funding, to find a good uh, solutions to this problem, and uh, maybe public publish good papers. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Uh, in that case, we, we will never lose our job for quite a long time. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. Yeah. So generally speaking, so for, for speech and language processing, is Chinese a little bit difficult, more difficult than, than English? Well, uh, uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, actually, for some methodology, I think uh, they are very similar. You can borrow uh, the method for English language and other languages to Chinese language. But for Chinese processing, we do have our specific uh, problems. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, unique. Uh, for example, the Chinese is very... Uh, no, we have a written uh, symbol set. We have, uh, we have syllable, Chinese syllables, which is called pinyin. The two sets are different. Yeah. The corresponding the mapping between them, you know, maybe it's n to n mapping. They're not one to one mapping. So very difficult to solve. Oh, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. Okay, my next question. Um, I just want you to share some of your experience about how to do good research because you know many young researchers they mm -hmm. they don't know, they, they cannot even figure out ways to do it effectively for their research topic. Mm -hmm. So can you give some suggestions? Okay, okay. So uh, maybe I'll just tell you what I think about it. Uh, I have uh, supervised uh, over 30 uh, PhD and master students. And uh, during the supervision, I can find some problems. So I would like to take this opportunity to, 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 to tell something about this. Uh, to my understanding, I I think uh, the first important thing is to find a good topic. Yeah. Uh, there do be many different kinds of challenges in the area of the research, uh, for, uh, for example in speech and language processing. But you should find a very good topic. This should be not only theoretical uh, reasonable, but also practical reasonable. If your it is not uh, theoretically uh, reasonable, then maybe you cannot publish good papers. You cannot find uh, it's not easy for you to find innovation points. 
Yeah, but it is too difficult. Then you maybe you cannot finish your thesis. That's well, I think nobody will like it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but if it is not uh, practically uh, useful, then maybe this kind of technology uh, cannot be used uh, when you generate some really good results. So my opinion is that you should uh, keep a good balance between the two points. So this is the first one to find a good topic. Yeah, the second one I think uh, uh, which is very important is that you should perform a very uh, good analysis to your experiments. Uh, why? I can see a lot of people, they just uh, do experiments. And if you, they find the results is good, okay, keep going. <laughs> and if they find the results is not as expected, just get then it. they are disappointed. And they stop, they are worrying, why, where, where is uh, the, where is uh, the reason? But they, they don't care what, what is the reason behind the experiment. They just think, oh, okay, may, maybe I can change my method, maybe we try another way. So either bad results or good results are both fine if you do analysis. Right? Yeah, I, I think so. For example, maybe bad, bad results indicate uh, you know, a big success. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, obtain the bad result, maybe you're trying to find why it is bad. You get very uh, deep analysis on this and you can find the reason is behind this uh, experimental results and uh, maybe you can find very good points yeah it's innovative so this is a, this is a second point I think it's very important the third point is that I encourage people students to try to learn something from other fields for example I'm doing speech and language processing maybe you can you know attend some workshop for image, maybe you can attend some workshop for uh, multimedia because you can borrow some ideas between uh, uh, from these fields. I believe that some methodologies are similar between all these different fields. Uh, if you can learn some from that, it is very beneficial to your research. So this is the uh, third point. So I I believe that these three points are. Uh, all very important for young researchers. Okay, yes, that's very really good. Yeah. Okay, so here comes the last question. Mm -hmm. So, any other suggestions uh, for the to the younger generation researchers besides uh, doing good research? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, our uh, association is uh, Asia Pacific uh, Association. So it's a focus on this uh, region. Right. Yeah. Uh, as everybody knows that Asia Pacific is becoming the world center. Yeah, gradually. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one of the world center. And not only the economics, it's uh, it's uh, growing very fast. I think another point is that uh, the research and development is also becoming a world center. Uh, I uh, I'm serving as uh, uh, associate editor of IEEE Transaction on Speech and Language Processing, and also associate editor for uh, Speech Communication, and also OCPA Transaction on Signal and Information Processing. So I can find from recent years that there is a great uh, you know uh, increase of number of submissions to all these uh, journals. And also you can see in conference you can find many people coming from Asia Pacific area. Uh, so this is very important. I think this provides a very good opportunity for us uh, to, uh, to do uh, a lot of... Uh, it's a very good opportunity to you to uh, do a lot of efforts. Uh, so I would like to say that trying to find a good topic of your interest in this area. Uh, maybe it's very practical, useful for the econo sorry, e economics in Asia Pacific area, in Asia Pacific region. 
and then focus or concentrate yourself on this topic, trying to find some new things, trying to find some new findings. And then uh, there is a uh, uh, saying that if you are able to dig one wheel, and you will be able to dig other wheel. So no matter which topic you are working on, just focus, just concentrate yourself on it, and then you will be able to uh, do a great deal of contributions uh, in the future. So that is what I want to say to younger researchers. It's a good suggestion. So thank you very much for your sharing. I think the younger generation researchers will benefit a lot from professors' suggestions. Thank you for your participation. Yeah, welcome.